Hello, this is Warlock. Uh, Rick Baker from uh, Facebook group Fantasy Maps and World Building asked me how do I draw my maps on Procreate. So I decided to do this uh, do this little tutorial. First of all, uh, let's set up the background color. I usually go with somewhere you know, around orange, uh, brown, gray. Kind of a something that resembles an old parchment or something as such. Yeah, I, I, I believe this could be good. Then I um, pick the color and pick a um, browner, darker shade of the same same color. And on a new layer I use a Terralea brush, big size, and I just gently wipe the uh, first texture, or first layer of texture. And then on another layer I tune, uh, tune down the size of a brush and uh, just go to another layer and a uh, little more darker on the sides. If you want, you can on this stage also uh, sketch some of the uh, land masses. <clears throat> so uh, let's say I wanted the uh, it's a peninsula like here. This darker area will be water and uh, the light one is land mass, like so, yeah. And now let's put on a drawing gu guide, just to, I, I like to use this. This is a 110 pixel size per grid, and I like to do it just to keep it, it's easier to keep the scale. <clears throat> and then we put on dark, black and uh, Gensing ink, which I usually use for lining. <coughs> New layer and quite small, perhaps 3%. And then I uh, gently begin to um, map out the uh, coastline. There can be some little islands here and there. Of course, you don't have to follow this texture if you have a you can sketch this coastline first and then do it afterwards but uh, I usually like to use this Gensing ink since it gives me a um, control on the uh, thickness of the line if I draw it downwards and push a little harder it makes a it makes a thicker line and if I just gently move it it is a thinner. I like this as it brings uh, life to the line work. So I just you know, go crazy with the uh, coastline and you can do this with a um, you know a white lines or a you know white curves if you wish but I usually like my maps a little rougher on the edges, so I just, uh, you know, wobble, wobble my pencil and uh, adjust the pressure to give it more rough look. Here, and then on the peninsula. This is the <coughs> quickest part of the map making to draw the coastlines. Of course, if you, 
if you wish to, you know, plan more carefully the coastlines and stuff, you don't have to do this, uh, this thing I did with the wider brush. Just a, if you, if you just wish to draw a map and you don't have anything particular shapes or continent sizes or such in mind, you can just do this and draw away. I find this really, really uh, smooth and uh, relaxing. We can have some rivers going towards the inland here and there. And I don't really actually know if this uh, landmass makes any sense, but this is just a more of a technical technical uh, tutorial. Now we can have some islands here on the uh, lighter lighter areas. Just. Uh, have variation on your line thickness so it's just you know it looks more natural and uh, it flows flows nicely yeah so now we have a base landmass here and uh, <clears throat> of course you if you wish to do these you know in a figure lines you can do that but i personally prefer you know to keep the grand scale of it and now we do an another layer and add some mountains so i usually just put another layer and set opacity to somewhere around 60 or 70. let's put 65 and uh, now we need to decide where and how do we wish our mountain ranges. I would say uh, somewhere around this section would be good. And the way I do this is you still have that same again singing and the layer set to no, 66. And just begin drawing and here you can also Try to keep it uh, flow natural and uh, not too long straight lines since uh, mountain ranges are not actually uh, that uh, straight or you know they're not like they don't have too sharp, too much sharp edges or 90 degree edges and here we can perhaps put some go this way and now the fun part starts on the uh, on the eastern side of the mountains i usually do these in darker shade and these in lighter shade and this is once again where your uh, press sensitivity comes into play and this is also where why I like to use these grids so that I can use, I can keep the uh, size uniform. So uh, darker sides here. You can put some peaks every now and then, and uh, thinner lines on the west side of the mountains. This makes the mount this first line here ensures that the mountain range looks somewhat more natural as a many mappers tend to do this that they just make you know mountains and uh, they are just uh, hills or um, 
mountain peaks after one another. But this method ensures that uh, the flow and the uh, feel of mountains is more natural as the, as the ridge is already established. Now you just pick out the details to make it more visually appealing. And a little more pressure on the eastern side and a little less pressure on the western side. Gives it a little or gives a nice um, nice visual look. You can break this line ever now and then you know go over it and a little bit more this way as well. But uh, it should be when you look at it at the final product, it should you know look like a natural ridge or whatever that part of the mountain, highest part of the mountain is called. Not quite sure. So yeah, that's basically how I do stuff, at least at the moment, until I figure out a better way to do it. And of course there are different styles of maps to make you sometimes, sometimes you want more, you know, detailed topography and uh, heights and all that. But uh, I currently like this method a lot as it's uh, quick and uh, nice and the results are very pleasing to the eye, so to speak. But, uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Reverse. <laughs> and um, this is something that I admit I am not expert. And, uh, well, I believe, judging from the discussions on the fantasy maps and world building group, uh, it seems that nobody's, you know, expert. And uh, the uh, issue of reverse is constantly under debate. But um, <clears throat> if I gather, if I have gathered any anything from the constant discussion over the topic, is that um, we want reverse to flow from multiple sources on the higher higher um, parts of the land and then combining in the single stream before it reaches the uh, ocean so um, and once again I like to do this you know so they wiggle and uh, so they're not just here's a river and here's a river this is not what I want to do but uh, let's uh, one way to look at it is like um, it's like a tree. It begins here, the trunk. It's old, wriggly tree, and it, uh, because remember the land is not um, it is not flat. There are small little height variations, and the river always flows through the towards the lowest part so uh, here's the main body and it ends in the ends in the mountains and then we can add another segment it's like a tree with um, branches spreading on the um, higher part or top of the tree. And once again, pressing, uh, applying pressure on the pen allows you to make them more narrow as you reach the higher grounds. So yeah, something like, uh, something like this. And uh, 
one thing I also had a really hard time figuring out is to, how to how to build or portray, portray forests. Uh, in traditional Tolkien maps, forests are displayed like um, like this, and uh, then they have then they have a little trunks. This is fine and well, sure. It's not it's not a problem, but I just don't think it fits this kind of a visual too well. So what I usually do is I just put a little dot with more pressure on the lower part and then releasing pressure on the upper side. These are not by any means perfect, but uh, if you want to visualize forest, this is the best thing at the moment I I use. And you can once it reaches on the reaches the edges of the forest, you can have have them more spaced out and and so stuff. Stuff like that. So there's a little forest. And uh, another thing I like to do is on these coastal sites, I usually just put some. Uh, this is a, just a visual thing. Not. This is not mandatory by any, any means, but I just think it, you know, gives a nice, nice. Um, it makes it easier to tell which part is uh, water and which part is land. So yeah, there it is basically the stuff I have been working or how I have been doing stuff for for the time being. Um, I'm sorry for the quality and uh, lack of structure <laughs> on this so-called tutorial, but um, I don't have editing tools right here now with the work. I just had a 30 minutes of spare time and decided to get this one out of the out of the system. So uh, let me think. What do you? Uh, let me know what do you think. Uh, critique and ideas are always welcome. But uh, until next time, see ya.